Welcome to Basic Medical Sciences. Alright, so in this video, we're going to talk about vitamin B3, also known as niacin or nicotinic acid. Right, so the objectives are to discuss the characteristics of vitamin B3, the functions of vitamin B3, deficiency, what causes deficiency of this vitamin, and the clinical features, of course. We will conclude this video by talking about the therapeutic uses of vitamin B3. And I will also connect uh, vitamins with another pharmacology topic, right? So this will be interesting. So uh, please, before you continue, can you click that subscribe button? Please, I'm begging you. Just to click. It's for free. Absolutely free. Okay, I hope you are done. Right, let's begin. Okay, we will start by characteristics of vitamin B3, right? So the active forms are nicotinamide, adenine, dinucleotide, that's NAD positive and NADH, right? So NAD positive is an oxidized form and NADH is a reduced form. Okay, I will tell you what this means at the end right so the second active form is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate that's nadp positive slash nadph right what about the synthesis of this vitamin right so uh vitamin b3 or niacin is synthesized from a neutral amino acid known as tryptophan Right, so this happens in the presence of two other vitamins, right? That that will be uh, vitamin B2, that's riboflavin, and vitamin B6, that's pyridoxine, right? So remember, vitamin B6 here is very important uh, in clinical features. I will remind you again, right? Uh, there is another neurotransmitter called serotonin right 5 hydroxy tryptophan right 5 hydroxy tryptophan is another name for serotonin it means it's also a derivative of tryptophan right but for this to happen uh, it also needs uh, two things thus tetrahydrobiopterin and vitamin b6 again okay uh, okay let's talk about the sources we gain this vitamin from meat like for example, liver, cereals, very important, seeds, and legumes. For resorption, this is through passive resorption in the intestines. And transport in blood is uh, transported as nicotinate. Nicotinate. Right. Okay, let's talk about the functions of vitamin B3. Right. So, uh, it's mainly a cofactor for redox reactions. Wait, what are redox reactions? Redox reactions are reactions where both oxidation and reduction take place, right? So the main enzymes associated with uh, niacin are alcohol dehydrogenase, isocitrate dehydrogenase, uh, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, etc., right? Okay, so the first one we want to talk about is NAD positive, right? So this one serves as an electron carrier in redox reactions, especially in catabolic cellular processes, right? For example, in glycolysis, right? Glycolysis will be breaking down glucose. That's a catabolic process, right? Okay, so uh, the reduced form, is NADH and the oxidized form is NAD positive, right? So, okay, how do you remember this, right? There is a mnemonic we, uh, we used in high school called oil rig. Oxidation is loss of electrons. Rig, reduction is gain of electrons, right? So you can see this one has gained electrons, this one lost electrons right okay right the other thing is nadph right so i told you in the previous video that we get this molecule from exos monophosphate shunt uh also known as the pendosphosphate pathway 
right? It provides electrons for anabolic reactions, uh, for example, uh, fatty acid synthesis and steroids, and is also used in other oxidation reduction reactions. Uh, uh, this molecule is also used in uh, respiratory base uh, cytochrome P450, that's the main one for detoxification in the liver, and also is used for uh, glutathione reductase. Right, so we talked about this glutathione reductase pathway in the previous video. You can click the link here and watch that video. Right, so uh, again, I just want to remind you the reused form. This one is the reused form. Right, and oxidized form is NADP positive. Right. Okay, let's talk about deficiency of vitamin B3. What causes deficiency of this vitamin? Right. Okay, so uh, the causes are the following malnutrition, heavy drinking, uh, and conditions associated with tryptophan deficiency. What are some of those conditions? The first one is heart nap disease, right? So this uh, will lead to decreased renal and intestinal tryptophan absorption, right? What happens here? This disease is an autosomal recessive disorder uh, where an infant will have like, uh, like defects in proteins which absorbs tryptophan in the intestines and in the renal tubules, right? Another condition is called carcinoid syndrome, right? Uh, so carcinoid syndrome, this is like, this are uh, 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 some, we can say like, uh, there is like a uh, release of serotonin from extra intestinal endocrine system, right? Yeah, something like that, right? So there will be, we can say like the serotonin will be high, Right. So remember, I told you both serotonin and niacin are synthesized from tryptophan. Right. So if there is a like a high metabolism of tryptophan to serotonin, it means there will be low low tryptophan for the synthesis of vitamin B three. Right. I think you understand. Okay. Then the other cause is vitamin B6 deficiency uh, due to treatment with isoniazid, right? So if you remember, isoniazid is used for uh, treatment of tuberculosis, right? So if you are giving a person this drug, you should use it. You should uh, give the patient together with vitamin B6, right? Why? Because I told you that uh, synthesis of niacin from tryptophan, you need this vitamin, vitamin B6. If it is not there, there will be decreased synthesis from tryptophan. Okay. Another one, uh, last but not least, is chronic consumption of grain that have not been processed by next um malinization okay what is this right uh like this is the process where grains or cereals are soaked in alkaline solutions for example in lime water right so this will help like this will have uh, two uses the first one the reason why i mentioned it here is because uh like this process will enable like uh niacin to be absorbed because it first like without this this process uh niacin is bound to hemicellulose so it's not absorbable in the git right so after next malinization then it will be available right then the second advantage of doing this is that uh you know aflatoxins right from fungi they will be uh, reduced also if they are if the grains are contaminated right okay so what are the clinical features of vitamin b3 deficiency right so there are two main features glossitis glossitis and pellagra right so pellagra okay is if there is severe deficiency right let's talk more about pellagra right 
pellagra has three main symptoms the first one is a characteristic dermatitis right so in this dermatitis there is circular broad collar rash on the neck it's also called casa or necklace right and it affects dermatomes c3 and c4 right and the other thing is uh, there is hyperpigmented skin lesions in sun exposed areas especially on the limbs right i have an image which i want to show you here right it looks like this you can see these exposed limbs there is hyperpigmentation on these hands and again in the uh, c3 c4 dermatome you can see this necklace right so this distribution is called nassau necklace nassau necklace right okay uh then that that was the first feature dermatitis right the second one is diarrhea and sometimes with the vomiting uh and the last one okay okay you can say the third because i said there are three main ones right neurologic symptoms like dementia hallucinations anxiety insomnia encephalopathy right so here i just picked dementia right it's the main one right so how do you remember this three typical features of severe vitamin b3 deficiency that's dermatitis diarrhea and dementia right and also you can say four d's including death right there will be four dermatitis diarrhea dementia and death that's the four d's but you can if you want to remember the actual vitamin you can simply use this the three typical features of vitamin b3 deficiency okay now let's talk about a vitamin b3 toxicity right if this vitamin is in very large quantities right it can cause facial flushing due to prostaglandin release not due to histamine right so this is what happens niacin will stimulate the lung iron cells to produce prostaglandin d2 right prostaglandin d2 will lead to vasodilation causing this facial flushing right so this facial flushing is not due to histamine you need to remember because histamine is also a vasodilator but it's not responsible for this right so it's seen usually if you started the uh, niacin therapy and you can avoid this through co-administration of aspirin right the other feature here in toxicity is hyperuricemia podagra right these are like it's, it's, it's gout ultimately right so you know this vitamin niacin like if it is in high quantities it reduces excretion of uric acid in the kidneys right it reduces excretion of uric acid so if uric acid is high then that will be gout ultimately right so the other features include uh hyperglycemia nausea vomiting pruritus and hives right now let's uh, conclude by talking about therapeutic uses of vitamin b3 right so the main one is in dyslipidemia right because vitamin b3 or niacin is a second line lipid lowering agent what it does is that it lowers vldl that's a very low density lipoproteins and increases hdl serum levels hdl is a high density lipoprotein right and if you remember hdl we want this one is a healthy cholesterol it's our savior right okay so i said this niacin is a is in second line lipid lowering agent right what are the other second lower a second line lipid lowering agents the other ones include fibrates bioacid resins cholesterol absorption inhibitors right so these are the second line lipid lowering agents okay so 
this one is it's not part of this video but if you know the second line lipid lowering agents it's of no use because you need to know the first line right so the first line are these ones uh fluvastatin they are called statins they are inhibitors of uh hmg coa reductase right that enzyme is highly regulated it's in the synthesis of cholesterol right so okay the the drugs are fluvastatin lovastatin pravastatin simvastatin atovastatin rosuvastatin okay there is a mnemonic right okay but first you need to know that the lipid lowering potency increases going this direction right so so okay the mnemonic goes like this flow okay flow is short for florence flow loves prague since a tour of russia right so it goes like this flow for flu vastatin loves low vastatin prague Prague is the capital city of the Czech Republic. I don't know. Yeah, maybe that's correct. Czech Republic. Um, since Simvastatin, Etol, Atovastatin, Russia, Rosuvastatin. Okay. Thank you so much. If you like this video, please make sure you subscribe so that you won't miss any of our latest videos. Thank you so much. Until next time.